one is not ever successful by themselves. As you reach forward, you always must reach back. I didn't have any big ideas about how to change the world, but I'm glad I'm smarter than I used to be. I love being with people, and I love giving. As long as I can remember, those are two things that have been important to me. As a teenager, I saw the importance of independence. If I could help others, be as independent as they could be, uh, that would be a, a, a good thing to do. What motivates me is what stands before me. Every day that you wake up, you don't know what the world has to offer you. Sometimes your greatest failures can be your greatest victories, and I love to, to be around that energy and that desire to do better. I was an only child. I was my father's son and daughter. We made frequent visits to the orphanage, in fact, every Sunday. But I didn't really understand why those children were there, who made the decision to put the children there. There was a point in time in which I began to question what we need to do is everybody in the church needs to just adopt one child. Everybody has a home. They close down the orphanage and everybody wins. <laughs> I moved here as a bride and became involved, I knew that I was going to have to get to know the city well quickly if I was going to be a resident here. But I went to General Hospital and took a volunteer job there in which I was going into the rooms immediately after a woman had a baby and talking to her about birth control. You can imagine how popular that was. I was an early volunteer at Caldwell School, which was a development school in East Nashville. And I remember this one young child that I worked with every single time I was there. And finally she was able to speak and finally she was able to smile. You know, it's my mere moment of birth that we, <laughs> we have to live out wherever we're placed. I can remember early on, uh, in the first and second and third grade, being one of those people who was always the teacher's helper. I came from a, a single parent divorce household, raised by a mother who worked in a paper factory. She was the highest ranking woman in the paper factory. She instilled in us this desire for excellence. She also shared with us that there are no barriers that the only barriers are those that you place in front of yourselves and that there's always opportunities. So I see barriers as opportunities. When I went to medical school, I was gonna be a neurosurgeon and thought, okay, this is gonna be something that's really scientifically driven. And then I did my uh, obstetrics and gynecology rotation. And um, what really inspired me was that women were just a joy to work with. You could do research in endocrine disorders, you could do research in surgical procedures to improve a woman's chances of getting pregnant. And I said, this is what I want to do. Many people wouldn't have thought necessarily that I would go to Harvard Medical School and achieve some of the other things that I have achieved. But it is all possible, particularly if you have people surrounding you with love and encouragement. As a child, my parents exposed us to so many activities, the arts, the church community work. It was very rewarding. I truly do feel the more you give, the more you get back in life. The moment I came to Nashville, I knew this is where I needed to be. And each year as the city has grown, I felt like I've been fortunate and blessed to grow with it. I knew I wanted to make a positive impact on others. I didn't know how, where, when, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. Doing volunteer work at the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital or in the Junior League, those years of doing, nobody ever says you have to do this. It comes from my heart, I really enjoy it. 
I've been very lucky to have a lot of incredible mentors in my life. The people I work with are inspiring. They give me energy. They give me knowledge. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I'm not learning from, from others. I was good with numbers, and once I kind of found my way, accounting was a profession I chose. I went into that profession because I really like adding up numbers in a room by myself. <laughs> I was a senior VP and CFO at a $60 million manufacturing firm. About 500 people were there. I worked at this company for uh, 21 years, but I always felt that I could do more. And so after 21 years, I retired. I took a year and a half off and started thinking about how I could use this weird set of skills I had to help give back to the community. I saw an ad in the paper for Habitat, and they were needing someone with the skills I had. I've had to step out and really talk about a cause that is extremely important. I often say that it took me 50 years to figure out what I was supposed to do. I feel extremely fortunate that I found this uh, because it has stretched me in ways that I never could have imagined. I was a member of the Girl Scout troop. Our leaders felt that if they could instill in us the value of education, that it would help us move from our current circumstances into better circumstances. They brought in women who were unlike women I had seen before. They were professional women. And these women would come in and talk to us about their careers and um, how they became a lawyer and how they became a doctor. And over and over and over again, they talked to us about the value of an education. It, for me, was a defining moment in my life. I have just had the wonderful privilege of having some phenomenal women who have been willing to give it away to enrich me. And I know they were thinking, she will pass this on. And that's not unique to me. I think that's unique to every girl and to every woman to every boy and to every man, that when you're given that unique gift, whatever someone is sharing with you, you've got to pass it on. When I got to be a teenager, I was very interested in being the homecoming queen and in being popular and all that kind of stuff. And I did get on the homecoming court. My friends teased me about this all the time. They even gave me a, a pad of paper that says, um, I should have been homecoming queen, but I'm over it now, but I should have been. I also had a teacher who would always say, Miss Gibson, you need to, you know, focus on your brain and um, this, this youth will, will leave you, but your brain will be with you always. So I think he had an impact as well. I really prefer to do something where I can have a long-lasting impact. And so if it's something where maybe I can stick with a program for a while, even if it's not a huge impact, but if it's something like reading to a child and you see them week after week and they get to know you and you get to know them. Almost everything I've ever done is because of a group of us did it and I happen to be part of that group. I just love being together with a group of people who are making a difference in the community. I'm motivated by life, and I'm motivated by the fact that no two days are ever the same. No two minutes will ever be the same. I've been given so much and blessed in so many ways, and it's just, to me, what I am to do is to give back. In talking to people, you can make them hear, um, hear themselves and make them see that they can be successful. The more you give, the more you give back. It's a, it's a rush. It's a, it's a joy that I find in life. Everybody who gives receives and everybody who receives gives.
I've evolved from being a single entity trying to make a difference to joining a group of people who really can make a difference.